when we're talking about chelating agents, there's a couple of things that we're really trying to solve for when we're using those chelating agents. One of them is that we need to make sure the element that we're chelating is going to be protected, meaning that if I put it in a low pH environment or if I put it in a high pH environment, the element itself is not going to be subject to the general chemistries that are happening in the solution. So if, for example, I just took a piece of iron atom, for example, or if I took an atom of iron and I put it in solution, above a pH of 7, it would form iron hydroxide because there's no real chelating agent and there's no real buffer preventing that hydroxide from interacting with the iron and then making that insoluble salt. And at that point, my iron precipitates, falls out, and no longer available for the plants to take up. But if I have a chelating agent in a chelated form of iron, what ends up happening is the solution pH can rise above 7.0, but because the iron itself is being gripped, all of those hydroxyl molecules that are trying to attack the iron and get it out of my hand, they're not going to be able to do it because my ability to hold on to iron is going to be much stronger than the ability of these hydroxyl groups to come in to, in to try to take it out of my hand. So the benefit of a chelating agent is that you can extend the pH range in terms of what is available for the plants to take up before it either precipitates out or becomes insoluble. Uh, the other thing that we have to look at is biological relevancy because it's not enough to just protect the EDT or, or to protect a mineral and to make it available for plants to take up. And I kind of slipped. I said e, I said the word EDTA a little bit in advance there, and, and that's because EDTA is a synthetic chelating agent that does, does a fantastic job of protecting uh, metal ions in particular from oxidation. But the problem is it does too good of a job because when the plant tries to access that mineral, mineral or that metal cation that's present inside of there, they have a really hard time breaking EDTA down. And so what ends up happening is EDTA passes through plants basically unmetabolized. It'd be better to have a chelating agent that could protect the charge, deliver in high solubility, because that's also important, and then also be fully metabolized by the plants. And this is where we should enter the discussion about citric acid in particular and its role, and how it plays a key role in not only iron, but also other micronutrients.